Hello guys. Well, guess who? <laughs> David Vost reporting for duty and uh this is Free Radio America. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's uh guess what? Raining. <laughs> poured. It poured down and thank goodness it kind of let off a little bit cuz I need to do this uh video today, guys, because um, well, I hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. I really do. And I really believe that this is going to be a good day because um, I've decided to go ahead and go a little further. I mean, kind of uh, what we were talking about. We, we've been talking about a lot of things. We went into astrology quite, a, quite deeply. And then we started talking about uh, Madame Blavatsky and different things in Germany and the tunnels under the ground. I can't go back over all of that stuff. So, we're, you know, in this video, I, I think it's important for anyone who hasn't seen those other videos. There's quite a few of them that we've been doing that you probably could... If you really want to know what's going on here, go back and watch all of that. But where do we begin today? Because, friends, I... I, I, I uh, forgive me. Give me a moment to to express this so that you can understand it and 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 I hope I can do that because this is just going to be I I I I've been holding off explaining this going this deep because oh man I mean you know it's it would be like um <laughs> 30 years ago, if I came on the television, you know, of course we didn't have uh, YouTube and everything, but let's say I could write a book or something 30 years ago. Uh, I mean, in those days, you know, people bought, lost their mind over somebody coming out like Von Doniken saying the chariots of the gods, you know, like, what? That's crazy. And if somebody would have said that, that, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, we're getting there. We're learning. We're, our, our hearts are opening. Our eyes are opening. And we're beginning to find out that everything we've ever heard, everything we've ever believed, everything we've ever been told, demanded to believe, forced, intimidated, you know, propagandized, it's all a pack of lies. <laughs> but the problem, is, and, and we're getting to the point, I think already we, we begin to realize that Okay, maybe the the whole entire reality around which we live is completely a lie. I mean, this goes so deep, I don't think you would believe me if I told you. I don't think you would, honestly. A lot of you are like, I'd believe it, Dave. Just let it out. Tell us, what do you got there, Dave? Well, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you. I can't tell you all of that. I mean, it's bad enough that, you know, last week we told you that there's portals going in and out of this earth and, and aliens, you know, making tunnels under the ground and and stuff. But but the problem is, is that I have to tell you something today that I probably will, I, I could end up having my entire channel shut down. I have to be very careful about how I say this. I know I should you know, just go ahead, just go, Dave. You're wasting your time, you know, um, Babylon about what you shouldn't say or you ought not say or you just say it, Dave. Okay, I get that. But it's trust me, this is difficult for me to just blurt it out. And it can't just be blurted. I mean, I got it's at least probably another several videos on just this subject because there's no way. I mean, if I just told you, okay, well, the. There's a pink unicorn in the sky. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe me. I have to lay the groundwork. I have to show you the proof. Go back through the history. Um, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of things that I have been kind of saying. I And at, at, at every stage of the road, I, I never thought that I ought to say it. I mean, 10 years ago when I told, when I did the video about Yahweh being the devil, I thought, Dave, what in the, are you insane? You are going to, people will 
not only will they come down and bust your door down and probably crucify you, but, you know, they're not going to believe you. It's not going to do you any good to tell anybody anything like that. Because they just, they don't understand it because it would take video upon video upon hours of, of research and study for somebody to come to that conclusion, to, to understand and open their eyes to that point. But you know what? I was amazed because my father in heaven was guiding and directing me for so many years and teaching me. And and I felt the Holy Spirit inside of me literally saying, this must go out to the world. You've got to tell. It's time. They're going to wake up. They're going to be able to understand this. I mean, like I said, I was just a little kid and I remember, you know, thinking, man, don't these people know that doctors are are, are just uh, murderers? That, that It's all a lie? These little pills you're taking? It's just, it's, it's, it's just a hoax? It's killing you. The, the food is killing you. And I thought, you can't tell people that. They believe in their doctors and they believe in their politicians and they believe in, the, in their religions. You can't tell people, oh, your religion's just a pacifier. Okay, that was that. But it amazed me. I didn't know that the world would wake up to this extent. I knew it'd have to if we're ever going to get anywhere. But I couldn't even have imagined. My mother passed away in 1994. 1994. And I think, my goodness, that's, what is it, the year 2021. So we got 21 and 90, so that's 8. So uh, 29 years ago, 30 years ago. My mother passed away. That doesn't even seem like that long, 30 years. But, you know, I mean, it's just a little short time. But in that amount of time, my mother would not recognize this world if she came back right now. She wouldn't. Well, I mean, you know, it hasn't changed that much, I guess. But but, but our society, you know, she, <laughs> these phones, the, the, the Internet and all this stuff and the computers, it, she, she would, you know, just literally be amazed. So I didn't know that the internet was going to get to this. I mean, I used to dream of maybe writing a book so that people could maybe read this, those who wanted to, and, and you know, decide if they wanted to, you know, ponder these things. But but I never thought that I would be able to. I mean, they used to say, I, I've told you guys this before, you know, if, 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 if a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words, um, how much would a video be worth? <laughs> you know, I mean, I used to want to r write a book. It used to, man, people used to be like, oh my goodness, it's a million seller, right? It sold a million copies. Oh my goodness, you know, one book sold a million copies. And a lot of times people buy the book and they don't really even read it, you know, maybe a few pages and they put it away on the shelf. But nowadays, I myself, me alone, me, myself, and I, I can do a video that could reach a million people. And it's not just a little book. It's it's not just a paragraph, but it's an entire hour worth of talking and and stuff. So and then I've got you know thousands of of, of videos and so I've been able to to uh, it just amazes me that uh, how quickly and 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 it it's all over the, the world. People are, are, are beginning to open their minds and realize so much stuff. So, I think it's time we have to. If I, There's a lot of things I think you want to know, you're curious about. But you can't, I can't even explain those things. I, you know, without telling you some other things that, that I'm scared to say. Because, um, for one, I mean, I could be arrested. Literally. I mean, I'm not kidding you. And we're at that time in history where knowledge is really increasing, but at the same time, we're also, uh, the bad guys are like, uh-oh, oh. <laughs> the, the floodgates have opened. They're trying to close it and, and chomping down and beat, taking people off the internet. So, forewarn you, there's going to be some things in this video that for some of you, if you don't listen all the way through and you don't really give it a minute and think about it. And if you haven't seen a, quite a few of my videos in the past, I don't think you're going to accept it. You're going to click off. So I'll just say right now, 
For those of you who are going to leave, goodbye, and I'm sorry, and I didn't mean to offend you. I, I you know, I, honestly, I wish we could be friends. I, I have nothing against you. I know you're doing the best you can. And I know that you're believing the things that you believe because you believe them and you're being sincere and honest. And, and I have nothing, no hard feelings whatsoever. But I'm asking you, if there's anything inside of you that has ever said, you know, I wonder, when I was told I could never think those thoughts, and I just assumed, well, that's because it's so evil, I'm not supposed, you know, I wouldn't, I shouldn't want to. Like, that That would be wrong. But then why, if it's, if it's so wrong, do we have to be, you know, like, ridiculed and intimidated not to say that? And why would it be so wrong? You know, why, why is it I'm not allowed to say, is there a God? <laughs> you know, I mean, just think about that. Yeah, how is that just so obvious? Well, of course there's a God, David. Now what are you doing? You're out there, you, you blasphemer? Yeah, they, they told Jesus he was a blasphemer. And they murdered him. Because he said, ye are gods. They said, why do you stone me? You know, I've said many good things. For which good thing are you stoning me now? You know? And they said, because... You being just a man, makest thyself equal to God. Now, okay, guys, you're saying, oh, is that all you're going to tell us? Is that we're like God and everything, and, and God's in us, and, and we're going to be powerful children of the Lord, and we're going to have all these. No, we already got that. Krishna Maruti already told you that. That was, you know. Years ago, we got that. But it took us that. I mean, we were, we, we, it was okay. We, we were allowed to say that at this point. In fact, there's lots of people out there just atheists now. So, yeah, things are moving along. But, I, you know, I don't want you to be an atheist. I don't want you to, I, I just don't want you to believe in, I just don't, I, well, you can do whatever you want. But what I'm trying to tell you is that there is a divine quality a divine existence. And the divine, which I guess some people think is God. But you see, I don't think it's God because, you know, the word God's not in the Bible. That's an English word, gut or something. It's some other thing. And it, it, it is a God. I suppose it is a deity. But it, it really is, is one particular deity that, that the goat at the bottom of the wheel, the Yahweh, and 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 this stumbles people, but it's the truth. The Bible's about astrology, and there were there's the like Jesus said, "My Father's above, and your Father's beneath." There's the God of this world, and there's the God of heaven. There's the God of hell, who has the key to the bottomless pit. But this was something we never understood. So, but what I'm talking about, though, isn't even about that. What I'm talking about is, oh, how could we we say this without just completely losing my audience immediately? But so, um, well, it's like uh, some things in the world you just you, 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 and this is kind of a an anal uh, an analogy of how ridiculous our world is. But because there, there's two ways you can go with this. Some things you're you're encouraged to do all the time that you shouldn't be doing, and other things you're you're told never to do. Okay, and and sometimes it's the same one thing. That schizophrenically we're being told both ways. So on one hand we've got sex all over the place. You know, children are being like two three years old sit down in front of a television. They're watching people make love and naked people and 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 you know it's it's just real easy to access pornography and and then and then worse than that violence and nudity together which is much worse but it's not x-rated it's only r-rated or pg-13 but you know you can go with your parents you know and watch this brutality and, and nakedness but but now so so we're encouraged and we're, we're and we're handing out condoms in, in, the, in the grammar school right 
I think down to the, the, the preschool level. So they're in, totally encouraging sexual activity. You know, they got a chart in their, you know, little kindergarten class, and they're like, now this is a titty, and this is, a, you know, <laughs> they got the whole, they're just describing the whole anatomy and what you, you know, like, uh, uh, teacher, what, what do you do with that? Well, you know, they tell them everything. And then they encourage them to, uh, like, this is what, what's go big going on. Now, now, now it's to the point where, where they're lying to the children. Like, well, now, you see, this is not, don't, don't, uh, start thinking this is actually a boy and that's a girl. See, biology, forget that. And we don't got biology anymore. This is like, uh, you know, grading on the curve here. <laughs> I don't know what, you know, like, no, this, see, you could be anything you want. We can whack that, whack that thing off. I mean, we got doctors, right? So this is the insanity, right? And then, on the other hand, see, that's, you go and sit down at a little desk and you listen to the teacher. She's telling you all this stuff, right? Then on Sunday, we go to church and the, and the children sit down and they, I don't know if it's a desk or what, but they, you know, they go in, in, a, in a little room around a circle and they color and stuff with Jesus or whatever. And they're told now, never, ever, ever, ever think about sex or you'll go to hell. Wow. So, now, if you were to tell a child anything about sex in that church or in many other circumstances in life, you could, at some point in history, they probably would have lynched you for speaking such horrid things in front of a child or, or, or exposing yourself or something. It would be, you'd go to prison to this day. To that day, you'd be going to jail if you were to walk down the street naked or something. Okay, but at the same time, at the same time, we're adults here. We know that the children are watching all of this on the television and being encouraged. So it's a schizophrenia that is so crazy that I don't even know how to, 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 um, grasp it but it's but but it's, the point here is that everything you're being told is a lie but not just information but things that are that are literally corrupting your soul causing great pain like uh confusion about your own identity this is how bad the world is now i say well Okay, yeah, we know that, Dave. So what? Well, because I'm showing you this because that's a good example, what we just covered there. Because because somebody's doing this on purpose. There's just these two sides of the wheel and they're just trying to... Uh, I don't think they're trying to liberate us. You know, we, we used to have all this uh, commandments and all this you know, thou shalt nots and everything. And now, in order to liberate us, they've got to, like, throw all this stuff at us so that we'll, we'll go, oh, okay, so all right, it's fine now. It's not like that. They're purposely continuing both sides of the paradigm so that we will literally go insane. And the, the, the reason for it is because they want us to literally go insane. So... But now there's other things in, in the world. Uh, we've been told the earth is round, okay? We're, well, this video is not going to be, I'm not even going to get into that, okay? We're not even going to talk about it at this point. But the point is, is that what if the earth wasn't round? What if, what if the sky, what if there's a big glass dome over your head? Well, that's ridiculous. But what if there was? Can you imagine waking up one day? It's like waking up in the Truman Show and, 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 and going, what? Our whole reality is just a, a set, a movie set? That's what we, we've been lied to to that extent. See, I'm not saying the earth is flat. What I'm saying is, though, that it's a little bit like the Truman Show. And when you find out some of these things that we're going to talk about, that's probably going to take a couple of videos to get there, because I can't, I ain't got the nerve. I'm sorry, I ain't got the nerve just to say it. So we're going to have to like, uh, you know, 
back up what we're saying to start with with some preliminary concepts. I don't want to lose you <laughs> along the way here. But now there's other stuff in the world that we're told that the that is a complete lie and the reason that you're told and it's and, and along with the lie and then just a lie there's a whole bunch of shame that goes with it like total guilt and fear and intimidation all right now just gonna throw one out there and i ain't saying for it or against it okay i'm just saying this is just information just, I'm just going to say something. I'm not saying it's good or bad or anything else. Okay, calm down. <laughs> calm down now. But I'm just saying, isn't it true that in this world, I mean, I just thought of a good example for this point I'm about to make. But like in Germany, it is so against the law to say that the Holocaust did not happen that I guess you could be put in prison for just saying it didn't happen. For having an opinion. Okay? You can't say that. Now, in America, we think, well, you wouldn't be put in jail here, Dave. Wait a minute. Did you know that we ban books in this country? Have you ever tried to find the book Mein Kampf? Have you ever tried to find that book? Well, what's that, Dave? Well, that's a book that <clears throat> the great Hitler, evil you know, the the great evil man, he, he, he wrote it. See, so he's so evil and so bad that they don't want you to even read his book. Because why? Well, I guess it's like Jehovah's Witnesses, right? It's like they don't care. You know, you go out and commit adultery or lie or cheat or whatever, right? And, and you just, as long as you say, well, I'm sorry, you know, and they'll probably forgive you. But the one thing you will not be forgiven for is if you say, well, I don't know if you guys are the truth anymore. <laughs> oh, well, then you can never speak to your family ever again. Now, why do you suppose that is? Because they don't want you to talk to your family. They might start waking up too. Mm, yeah, you get what I'm saying? So I'm not saying for or against anything. I'm just pointing it out. It just happens to be a fact that you are not allowed to say or talk about that information. And that's part of the information we have to talk about today. Okay, we have to. Because there's information that you need to know. For instance, I, I, I'm going to throw out... A, here's, here's why we need to know. Okay, just, just one example. Just throw this out there. Have you ever just been walking along... And all of a sudden, you saw something that you thought, well, that's really interesting. I'd like to know the answer to that. But then you're like, no, no, no. You're not allowed to know the answer to that. Just keep right on going down the road and don't pay any attention because you cannot entertain thoughts like that. I mean, seriously, you couldn't go, you get a question, you'd have to go ask or look it up somewhere. Well, you're not going to be able to look it up because there's not going to be any books allowed on that subject. So if you tried to go ask somebody, mommy, you know, she'd say, what? Don't, oh, oh my God, go to your room. Don't ever come out till after, you know, two weeks of, Banishment. I mean, seriously. Now, example. We're told that... Mm, all right. We're told... Look, oh, here's an example. We're told that... Oh, how do I say this? <laughs> but we're told that Jews... That, that Hitler killed, all right, I, I, I don't even really want to say a lot of these, these words. Mostly just because I don't want to be thrown off YouTube. And, and uh, by the way, YouTube, I'm not going to say what you think I'm going to say. I'm just talking about something. Can we talk about this? Okay. Yeah, Dave, I'll let you go for another couple minutes. But then if it gets any worse, we're yanking it. All right. Just give me a minute there, YouTube. -y. All right. Thank you. All right, hang on. <laughs> All right, let's see. I have to do this right now. All right, so y y you're not really allowed to say that it didn't happen, the hollow, you know, thing. All right, so you say, you're thinking, okay, it's not allowed to, to say it, then, but am I allowed to think about, in my own mind, um, 
how in the world is it that Stalin supposedly, you know, did the dirty deed over there in the Ukraine, which was part of the Soviet Union? Terrible, terrible, terrible travesty. No doubt. Guarantee it. Hey, listen to me, YouTube. I agree. It's a terrible tragedy. And I believe it happened. Okay, you got that? Understand? Okay. They're going to let me go for another minute here. All right. <clears throat> so it happened. And, and it was a bad thing. But my question is, and this is another part of the question. That, see, there's so many ins and outs here. We're not allowed to talk about. But, of course, you must know that Lenin was a <clears throat> one of these guys, right? He was one of these people. And he, and, and, and if, you know, I mean, 20 years ago, if you'd have got a book or whatever, they would have said that, yes, the Bolshevik revolution in Russia was a, yeah, one of those people revolutions, right? They, they were the, in charge of it. Lenin was one of those people. And you would have looked at statistics and you'd have found that there was only less than 2% of the population of the entire Soviet Union was these people. Less than 2%, like 1.5% of the entire population was this. Was this. And after the Bolshevik Revolution, 90%, well, according to Vladimir Putin, right, <laughs> someone that lives in our world to this very day happens to be the uh, the president of that uh, area called Russia. He says that before Perestroika or whatever, then this particular group of people had 85% of all of the positions of power. 85%. Hmm. Well, now, how is it then, if you look on the internet now and and type it in, because somebody might, you know, in their dark corner of their basement, you know, they might want to ask a question and they might type it in. So they've, they've got, removed all the articles saying that it was like that. And then, of course, how are they going to get around what Putin said? So they, what they do is they tell you what Putin said. And it's kind of like on Facebook where they got to have a disclaimer come up. Like, oh, by the way, we've already fact checked this. So it pops up and it says, we fact checked this. And it's not true. It's not true that it was far less than what, it was far exaggerated the number of people that were actually of this particular group that were ruling over the entire other people. And it was just exaggerated and let's just move on. Now forget about it. Don't think about it no more. Trust us. It was exaggerated. All right, let's say it was. Let's say it was exaggerated. It wasn't 80% or 85. Putin happens to live over in that country, was the president of the country. He's probably very intelligent and went through all the education and all that. And he says it. And he's not against them either. He's not against them either. He's not a, a, a racist, right? But he says it was 85%. All right. But Google says no. Okay, fine. So how about we're allowed to think about this a little bit more, YouTube? -y? Okay, yeah, they say I can think about this. A little, they're going to give me a little bit more. All right, so, so now let's say it's over-exaggerated. Was it 51% at least? How is it, what if it's 30%, 30, 40%, right? Okay, but there are only 1.5% of the population. How did that happen if it wasn't a thing that we're not allowed to say it, it was? And the question is then, because and, and then you look up uh, Stalin. Now, see, that was Lenin. He was one of these guys and Trotsky and those guys. And, and they would, the whole, all the positions, of, you know, you couldn't be a dog catcher, is what I'm hearing, unless you were of this group. And, 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 of course, millions of these... But, but here's the problem. Then we hear that a man named Stalin comes along. And look up who he was. You'll find in the ancient... A long time ago, like 20 or 30 years ago, if you would looked that up, they would have said, oh, yes, Stalin was also one of these people. But now they're saying, oh, there's no evidence of that. He was not. He was just a, a normal guy, Dave. And, uh, well, then, uh, okay. But how is it that a normal person, uh, you know, that, that is just a, what, a, a normal Ruski, right? <laughs> He's just a, uh, a Ukrainian or something or whoever, 
I guess he was Slovakian or something. I don't know. Croatian or I can't remember what it, I think uh, Georgian or something. Um, which doesn't mean anything about race, but there were a lot of these individuals over there too. Well, you did, back in the day, you'd look it up and they would say, oh, well, his, his father was something about D, J, D, E, U, a, something the Jew. Well, and then they would say, yeah, but they didn't have the word J, E, W. So they, they spelt it that way. So his father was son of a Jew. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I may have gone too far there. I don't want to say the word. But, you know, and other people today are saying, ah, that's ridiculous. That doesn't mean that. No, they don't have a word for that, but that doesn't mean that. Okay. Well, all right, fine. We don't know. I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. But for some reason, nobody knows nothing. Especially when, you get, when you're trying to figure something out. But, um, so, but he married one of these guys. I think he had two or three wives, and they were all, you know, from what I understand, at least two out of three of them were were this group of people. And he had relatives and very powerful friends. And you think about it, at the time that Stalin rose to, to power, there was still Trotsky and these people running around. And so the entire pullet barrel, you know, the the the, the, the positions of power were all according to Putin, 85%, and we're just going to say maybe it was only 51% or even 30%, but there's these powerful, obviously, they, they had a lot of power, they wouldn't have gotten that if they only had 1.5% of the population, and they ended up with any more than 20 or 30% positions, they must have had some way to capture those positions. And obviously, if Lenin and Trotsky were, then that's pretty powerful. So how did... Stalin raised up through the ranks. When everybody's around him, his wives, all of his friends, and everybody in that country is, is this people. But he's just, oh, I want to, da, da, da. He, he's not, though. He's not. Okay. Uh, granted, he, I have no idea. Let's just say he's not. But he's not, maybe he was put into power with some agreements. I don't know. Because then, here's the really odd thing. He goes forward and starts killing the people, the very people that, that we're talking about. Well, how do you wrap your mind around that? Like, Let's go to Germany now. Let's go to Germany. Now, we, we we're told that uh, the, the Ein Führer arose... And he was very anti, you know, whatever, right? He was very anti. And uh, in fact, all the people around him were very anti. Okay? Except for the fact that one of the guy's names, one of the very most powerful in his group that rose to power with him, who was very anti, happens to be his name is Rosenberg. Now, if you look that up, you'll just see, oh, Rosenberg, he was very anti, and he was a powerful N-A-Z-I, but we don't know. I guess he was a Catholic or something. Oh, well, what? If he was that powerful and he was very, his mother and father raised him and he was baptized and, and did the catechism and all of this stuff, right? Well, that must mean that if he's a powerful person, he's probably a Jesuit. Hmm. So now we're going to have to figure out, because we're trying to figure out why you've got these people like Eckhart and Solschosser, or I can't even say some of these guys' names. Um, one is this one of the guys that was very powerful that really created the party that we're talking about the the workers the 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 uh, German socialist party was a guy named Sabatendorf 
that man went up to Turkey, and we're just looking at Turkey and thinking, oh, so we went to Turkey, whatever, right? We don't realize, because nobody tells us, that the entire Ottoman Empire was 68% of these people. But in World War I, boom, they were all gone. Because Wilhelm II, who was also an Ashkenazi, we'll call him that, and Germany was very Ashkenazi at that time, before Hitler, they went in World War I and wiped out, and the Ottoman Empire fell, which, by the way, the Ottoman Empire had control of the land of Palestine. They could not make a homeland for the people of Israel until the Ottoman Empire fell or lost control of Palestine. So, if you go back and look in World War I, there was this big massacre of these people. And yet all the people that are in power seems to be these people. Wilhelm too. Wilhelm. So, you've got a lot of questions and don't seem to be any answers because everything has been hidden. So how are we going to explain this? How are we going to understand this? Well, the only you, I, I, I can't explain it to you. It's too complicated. But there is an explanation. There is a very good explanation. And the, since the world doesn't know the answer, we just kind of have mind fog when we think about it. And we're like, I don't understand, you know. But, uh, why did he hate them so bad? And, and why did, you know, what's the deal here? What's going on? Well, let me tell you that we have to, in order to be able to understand this, we're going to have to find out some interesting things that we've never been told. It's kind of like if you're going to build a house, you've got to start with a foundation. So if you're going to try and build a house without a foundation, you're never going to accomplish it. So we've got people all around the world that have tried to understand this. And they've never been able to come up with an answer. Never. Because they've hidden this so well that you will never get the answer. Remember, many of my videos in the past, I've said a lot of different little things, but I've never really given you a lot of proof for it. Because like I said, if I tried to start going into the proof, I'd have to have a video like this and I don't know how well that's going to go over. So it was like really difficult to, to just fill in all the gaps. But I've said that 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 the Holy Roman Empire was ruled over by these people ever since Charlemagne. And I've had a couple of people say, now, Dave, that doesn't sound right. I don't know how that could be, you know. And, and But that was it. Nobody, you know, really challenged it too much. But, but okay, how and why is this so? And, and, and if so, so what? Well, here's, here's the reason. Here's the little piece of information that you have never been told. Part of it we've already talked about a lot. So I'll just start. I'm not going to go into it deeply because we, we talk about it all the time. But as you know, when Jesus died uh, in about the year 47 AD, Rome put Mary Magdalene and 72, the 72 that Jesus chose, his Sanhedrin, Mary Magdalene, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who was one of the 72, and 70 others. And they put them on the ship with no rudder in the Mediterranean and, you know, sort of gave them a shove, no sail or anything, just out to sea. And they thought, well, looks like a storm's coming. They'll probably die and, you know, we'll be done with it. Because they didn't, you know, that here was this man they just crucified and he's got this wife and he's got kids. He's got, yeah, he's got a wife, Mary Magdalene, and there's a couple of children. And also this guy, Lazarus, that was raised from the dead. We can't allow this to be, you know, people will say, wait a minute, this guy was raised from the dead. Maybe Jesus is true. So they put them all on a boat and sent them off to sea. Well, the Bible says that the Lord 
sent an angel down and guided this boat all the way to Martial, France. This is the area called the Languedoc, the southern area of France. And we've talked about this a hundred times, so I'm not going to go into it anymore, but that created what we call the Fisher Kings. The Fisher Kings were down there for a while, and then, for some reason, this Holy Roman Empire didn't like them. You wonder why. So they had an Inquisition. Well, they had a couple. They had several. You know, they killed a lot of people. But, you know, at times they just killed indiscriminately people that were accused of being a witch or something, right? But then there were times where they just like went in and just killed every man, woman, and child. Uh, when they got the Waldensians and the Waldensian Inquisition, the Pope said, kill them every man, woman, and child. God will know his own true children, the true Catholics. So just kill them all. Let the Lord, you know, deal with it. Because we don't know who's who in this town, so just kill them all. So this is what they did. And there were literally, we don't know how many thousands or millions were, were killed of the Waldensians. But remember, before that, they did this Spanish Inquisition. And, and see, again, we're just left with opaque, broad stroke words. We don't understand any of it. Spanish. What do they have, what do they have against the Spanish, Dave? Oh, I guess they kill all the Spanish, too. Why? What, they weren't upset with the Spanish. Spain was totally full. Like, a large number of, of these people were there. And these were the Sephardic ones. So we got the Ashkenazi, we got the Sephardic. Now, the Sephardic were in Spain and the Iberian Peninsula. These are the ones that are very esoteric, very, you know, more Christian than the Christians. Right? These were the ones who wrote the Kabbalah, you know, the Sefer Yitzhar and the the Zohar. And they had these mystical, esoteric teachings. Well, you think that the Catholic Church wanted to kill every one of these people. Millions of people, wherever they were, if they were in Spain, get them. If they're up in, you know, the Waldensians or the Albigensians, get them. Just because they were Cathars, sometimes they were called different things. They had different names depending on where they were. They were called Bogomiles, they were called Pollocans, they were called Cathars, Albigensians and Waldensians and and um, ever, whatever else. Why were they trying to kill them? Well, because in order for any nation to have any right or any king to have a right to rule, they have to have a royal bloodline to rule. So, in the beginning... The Merovingian kings, they ruled, and they were the Fisher kings. But when Charlemagne, Charlemagne usurped the throne and killed the Frankish kings, the Merovingian line, he had no right, no authority to continue on his rulership. So he had to do something. Now, in killing them in the Spanish Inquisition, he wasn't just trying to kill the truth. Although that's ultimately the, the thing, isn't it? To get rid of the truth. We don't want anybody knowing the truth. So the Catholics is about, you know, like putting everything down in the monastery. Don't tell anybody. No lie. Burn the libraries, right? Kill everybody. Uh, anathema. You know, you're not allowed to say that. Burn them at the stake, right? That's how they were. That's how they rolled. Well, the Merovingians were building libraries and sitting down with Muslims and Christians and, you know, Jews, all together, sitting in a library, sipping on a spot of tea, discussing religion, and, and, and being perfectly happy doing so, was very liberal and free. The Moors ruled down through Africa. It was an old saying that said, you probably heard of it, is, you know, if you really need something, you got to go to Kim, Timbuktu to get it. Do you know what that saying really refers to? Timbuktu is a place in Africa. See, you couldn't get any truth up there in the European 
world because it was all, you know, shrouded in darkness and anathema and curses. And you got the popes breathing down your neck, crucifying people. The only place you were ever free is down the Moors rule all the way up the whole of Spain, right up to France. Well, right up to this little place called the Rhone River, Marcial, France, where the Moravian kings were. So as long as the Moravian kings were there, everything was fine. There was no, no war, no problem. Everybody was, you know, reading their esoteric truth and, and becoming more like the Lord and learning great wisdom. But the darkness came in. Oh, the devil didn't like that, did he? Whoo, buddy. So he says, we got to get rid of this. So he wiped out the Merovingian line. Well, many of them fled and went to Ireland and other places along the road. So you've got the story of King Arthur and the Holy Grail. And the Pendragon and da 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 da. And Sir Lancelot and Percival and all of this. Well, by the time the story finishes, uh, Wagner up in Germany writes a, a German version of the story. And in that story, it's come down to a man named Khan. Khan, or the, the Khanats, right? The land of the Khan. They were the kings that came from the holy fisher kings that arrived in Ireland. And this man was in the parable, had was given the chalice and he drank it. And he was seeking this woman who ends up being Sophia. Wisdom. So, the prince and the princess come together so they can rule the world and the world comes to peace. Well, these darn people down there in their Holy Roman Empire don't want any peace. Well, thank you very much. So they got to get rid of this and they're stamping them out. And this is what all these inquisitions is about. It's not just about the truth, but it's about the people that's preserving the truth. The holy knights who are protecting the Holy Grail and the Holy Textus Receptus the word of God. And so, what is Charlemagne going to do now? He's murdered the line of David from Christ through Mary Magdalene. And they're, they, you know, they went up there and they're ruling up in Ireland now or something, but it's some little country nobody knowed about. And, 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 and so, you know, what is Charlemagne going to do? He hasn't yet got no royal blood. So he comes up with a plan. He says, I can't take the Moors. I can't take Spain, but I want Spain. And, but I got an idea. Those Dan Shepardian guys down there, they're getting along well with the Moors and, and, and the Muslims and stuff. They, they're well with them and, and, and they're kind of like Christians as well, right? They got the Holy Grail and they believe in Jesus. They're, they're, they're Shepardic Jews from the line of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. So he went down and he made a deal. He says, listen, I got an idea. Why don't you tell the Moors, the Muslims, uh, you've got freedom down there. Why don't you open the gate for us? We'll come in there. We'll wipe them out. And um, yeah, we'll pay you a couple of bucks. You know, a couple of bucks. Well, after all, uh, the, what he didn't know is these weren't Ashkenazis. And so they didn't really care about money. They cared about the truth. They were protecting the Holy Grail. And they said, no, thank you very much. So Charlemagne goes back home and he's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I got to get control of everything and I ain't got no bloodline. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll make you another offer you can't refuse. He said, I'll tell you what, you guys just open the gate for me. I'll come in. I'll wipe them out. And because, you know, he... he 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 couldn't get them because they had a port. They were on the Mediterranean. They could he could he could surround them, but they had food because they they were bringing stuff in from the port, and so he couldn't get them right. So he said, "Just open the gate, and I'll come in and take them out. And here's what I'll give you in return: I'll give you your own kingdom, seven cities called Septimania, seven, and this whole area." will be yours and you will have a king and you can reign over your people. A Judaic king, a Sephardic kingdom called Septimania. And they said, well, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so, you know, hey, we'll do it. So they open the gate. So here comes Charlemagne 
massacred the Moors, and afterwards, Charlemagne goes, okay, so I'll keep my word. You can have a king, but here's the deal. You got to have a king that is directly in line for the throne of David. It can't just be old Bob over here, right? Or this Levite over here, or this guy where he's forgotten who he is. Some peasant, right? You got to go get a king. I said, well, you don't got a king. You know, I don't know how we're going to do that. You know, he's like, well, I, don't you worry. I got this all figured out. I've been talking with Babylon down there in Baghdad. And you know where you guys just came from, right? <clears throat> well, he says, we didn't actually come from there. We're, we're children of Jesus, right? We were in Jerusalem and our Lord was crucified and Mary Magdalene, they came over here. So that's how come, you know, we're Sephardic. He's like, well, that, 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 don't worry. Don't worry about that. Okay. I'm going to, I'll get you a king, but we've got to go to Baghdad and get the royal heir of uh, Shealtil, right? Jeconiah, the, 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 the one that remains the remnant of his seed, the last of the kings. And, um, We'll bring him up here. But here's another little you know, part I didn't tell you. Okay, You have your king, you'll have your kingdom, but there's only one other thing you got to do. You got to marry my aunt. The king got to marry my aunt. Alda or Adoa. Right? Sometimes they call her Adoa, sometimes Alda. So they agreed to it. it uh, Charlemagne's aunt uh, is now the wife of Malkar who comes from Babylon, of the royal blood of David. And now he's married into the line of Charlemagne, and the kings of the Holy Roman Empire are of the holy blood of King David. Well, this is talked about in Ezekiel chapter 17. It says there were, um, the king of Babylon went to, to Israel and took the people. And he took a tender branch from the top of the tree, which is the royal tree. And he, he found a, a young tender plant and he took it to Babylon. And he says, will it succeed? Will it take root and grow and, and, and have a traffic, a land of traffic and, and a kingdom? No, it will not succeed. But I will take another tender branch. And in, in, in that Hebrew word is, is Nassar. So this is why Jesus is called the Nazarite or the Nazarene because he was the branch, the tender branch. So there were two branches, one that went to Babylon in the city of traffic and one that was crucified and his son was taken to Marcel, France. So Charlemagne, Charlemagne has now set up the royal branch, the royal blood of King David from Babylon who bringing with him all the teachings of the lower part of the astrological wheel, because they don't know anything about the higher teachings. They only have the lower mysteries about their God, who was at the bottom of the wheel, Yahweh or Baphomet or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call him, Capricorn. So now most, and most of the, the Sephardic Jews have already been wiped out or they had to convert to Christianity. So a lot of them went to uh, Italy in a place called Florence. And one of the ancestors of these, you know, four popes who were Medicis, which is where we get the med medicine today. And they're also the same people that started the banks. And they were popes of the church. So they got the religion, they got the pharmaceutical medicine and they got the bank all sewed up under this line from King David from Babylon. And they need that or else they have no right to rule. They need the right to rule, but they want the branch that the lower carnal ego wants. They want power, they want money, and they want, you know, everything that they can get and love, I guess. <clears throat> so, meanwhile, Jesus and the Fisher Kings have gone to Scotland. And, well, he went to Ireland, and then it was transferred to Scotland, and then to England, the Fisher Kings, the line of the Stuarts, and, and, and so forth. But, so in the Inquisition, the, where the Catholics go in and murder, because they're, they're trying to get rid of the other line. 
See, the devil's like, I want my line to rule up there, my King David. I want my Ashkenazi to rule. Because Ashkenazis are the same people, but the ones who came out of Babylon. And the other Sephardic are the ones that came over from Mary Magdalene and the 72 and the other 70 and Mary and Martha and Lazarus on the boat. And they became the Fisher Kings and the Sephardic. And they've spread over the Iberian Peninsula. And when they were had the Inquisition, many of them went to 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 Mexico. And so you have a lot of people that are that are of the royal house of David, royal uh, Jewish names in in Mexico, like uh, Garcia and and uh, you know, uh, you know, all, all, many of the, the the surnames in in Mexico are from because uh, Columbus in 1492 sailed the ocean blue, and he had the red cross on his flag because he was a Knights Templar, who is the Fisher Kings who took his brethren to the free world to create, to, to get away from the persecution and to create a new kingdom and to bring the constitution and freedom and justice for all. Because this whole thing is set up now and, and the world is going to play out this whole war. So most of the, <coughs> excuse me, so many of the Sephardic individuals were murdered. Some of them left, went to Mexico, America, some of them, you know, the islands, some of them went to Turkey, and 68% of the Ottoman Empire were these people, and they settled there, and then some of them in Florence, and they were ruled over, that's where the ghetto got started, where these four Sephardic individuals were in a ghetto, and Medici, or the, the Pope, or the Holy Roman Empire, kept them in ghettos and wouldn't let them come in or go out, uh, would kill them whenever they, you know, spoke out of turn. They didn't have any freedom. They were persecuted, literally. Per and the ones in, in Turkey were persecuted a lot until they grew and prospered so much that they began to, to really take over. And that's when the Ashkenazi had to go in, in World War I, to take them out because they were planning on making a homeland and they had to get control of that. So, once you understand that, then you understand, okay, now I see why the Fuhrer didn't like the Ashkenazis. Because the Fuhrer was looking for the Holy Grail. The Fuhrer had Sephardic individuals in his cabinet. The Fuhrer had the swastika. Because that goes, that goes back to India. Now, wait a minute. The other day we were talking about Madame Blavatsky. You went to India. She met Moria and Kutumi, or Kuthumi, she calls it. Sometimes they, they write it Kuthumi. It's actually Kuthumi. I think she wrote it Kuthumi so you could understand what it was saying or something, or maybe she, but anyway. So, I'm almost an hour, and man, I really want to tell you the rest of the story. So, I'm going to go on for about another 10 minutes or so, or as long as I, I feel I have to go to get this part of this story finished. But we're going to do a couple of more videos, because there's going to be some... I, I haven't even got to the part that I'm, I'm a little worried about telling you. <laughs> Imagine that, because we've already told you some stuff you probably shouldn't even, you know, I shouldn't even be saying. But we've got to get to the bottom of why is all of this happening. And then when we figure out why, we're going to figure out the truth and it's going to blow our mind. So there's more that you have been lied to about. You've been lied to about Germany in many ways. You've been lied to about Madame Blavatsky and theosophy. Madame Blavatsky, um, she was definitely a prophet. And this person, Moria, Mahatma Moria and Mahatma Kutumi that came to her, the world has never understood because the people that took over theosophy, like Steiner, during the, you know, he came in there and, and separated from Blavatsky, Helena. By the way, Helena is El Anna, which means the deity of heaven. Very fitting. 
Helena Blavatsky had truth. The American and European elite rulers, mystic rulers of the world that were the run by this branch of the royal bloodline, they didn't want anything, and they wanted to keep their power. And they they knew that the other side, they thought, see, they were so ignorant, they thought that the other side would take power away from them if they shared it. They wanted it all to themselves. And the funny thing is that the other side had come down to the place where they didn't understand the truth either. You know, Okan, right? Uh, King Kong, <laughs> King Kong. He was in Ireland and, and they end up, you know, having a throne in Britain and they had w armies and war and they fought. Well, what was that sword for that he had to pull out of the rock? See, he'd forgotten. It's actually in the parable, the sword of wisdom, peace. It wasn't about ruling the world. And, and, and in the, the parable that we call King Arthur and Parsifal and Sir Lancelot and, 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 and these, these are, these are the continuation of the Holy Scriptures. They're not parables. Uh, they were written in prose. Right, you, 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 they weren't like poetry. It wasn't like a parable. It was written like history. It was written in prose. It was an actual historical document. But people to this day can't grasp it. All right. So he was told that he's going to. You can't rule the world unless you find your wife, Sophia. Wisdom. You have to have love, or you can't pull out the sword, my son. And you can't be using it for violence. Well, but, but, but Lord, they're trying to kill us and we're just trying to defend ourselves. Oh, no, no, no. This is, my king is no part of this war, world, Peter. Put your sword away. So they were confused. And we got the Fuhrer running around trying to find the, the Holy Grail and, and thinking it's all literal. And that if he gets it, he's going to have power. So what does he do? Well, he takes and goes after Polish Ashkenazis and wipes them out. The Sephardic trying to wipe out the Ashkenazis. But they were a little better because they were just trying to defend themselves. The other side didn't care about defending themselves. They just wanted to conquer and pillage and plunder. And they wanted to rule. They wanted absolute control. So this is why they had the Inquisitions and the Edicts and no freedom whatsoever. You were all slaves, saith the Lord, Yahweh. You shall be my slaves. So, the upcoming NAZI party, they began to find out that Germany had been ruled by this Ashkenazi group and they were, they had the control of the banks all the way from the days of Medici and then down to the Oppenheimers and then the Rothschilds. Yeah, these guys, it's not like they tell you that, well, you know, the church just made a rule that Christians couldn't have banks so they just like, well, I guess we're just going to have to give it to Mr. Rothschild, right? Because they, they're allowed to do that. Come on. They must have known that this was the most influential thing other than religion or, you know, armies. They need to hand it over to some family. Like, oops, I, I guess we let s this little group of individuals called Ashkenazi take over the world through the bank. We didn't mean to. No, they were the popes, Medicis, that ran the bank. They knew what they were doing, and they had other groups of these powerful Ashkenazis doing other things. One ruled the church, one ruled the bank, one ruled... They were all the same people, all the way since Charlemagne and his Aunt Alda, okay? So that, and, and so they had their child, Theodoric II, and, and Don Down, and, and they became the rulers of the Holy Roman Empire, because the Visigoths 
overthrew the Roman Empire and it became the Holy Roman Empire. And the Goths, actually, that's the name. The Septu Septimania was also called Goth. And that's why we've got movies. Uh, Batman, right? He's, 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 he's over Gotham City. Well, what was a bat? What is this, this bat? Shines his light and the cops come running, right? He, he's in control of the, the government, the military. They do whatever that bat says. Well, that bat lives down in a cave in hell. And he lives in Gotham City, which is, and they know this, but they didn't, they, they hid this from history. The kingdom of Septimania or the kingdom of Goths. The, this Goth, the kingdom of the, the this Goth just means the, the East Goths and the Austro, no, the, the West Goths and the, the Oster Goths meant the East Goths. But the Goths, the main central location is this place called Septimania or the place of the seven cities. That they took over with a, a royal branch of the line of David from Babylon that now was going to rule the world and the banks and the religion and total control because they were working for Yahweh. But you see, the other side's working for Jesus. But they're a little confused as well. So they hear this amazing truth come out by the great prophetess. Helena Blat Blavatsky. And, and she gets a message from Master Moria. Who is that? Well, you see, theosophical people don't know because she died in 1891 or something. And Steiner took over the German organization in 1895 and pushed it all under the rug. Then they started making up all kinds of stories about, oh, Blavatsky was a racist. No, she wasn't. She didn't believe in the Aryan race means white people. She never used the word white brotherhood or white lodge or any of that stuff. It's all a hoax. You see, they had to go in. They they realized. They put a, an occult spell, a, a what they called it, a a um an occult. They put her in occult prison. The 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 German Wilhelm rationalists of the great Illuminati group and the Jesuits that were there. They're very powerful. They didn't want to lose their power. And they saw that there was this other group from India. Now, why were they from India and not from where? They went to Spain or, or, or no, they went to uh, Scotland and Ireland and was, or they went to America or where were they going over there in India now? Oh, uh, well, remember Mary... Mary Magdalene went in the year 47. She went to Marcial, France, and she spent 30 years in a cave teaching the mysteries. And then she had her assumption. That means she left the earth to the great Shambhala. She went to the great city of the Grand King in the city of the, in the extreme, you know, opposite ends of the world at the north. She was taken up. As all the great ones do. And as the 12 apostles, when they were martyred, were all taken to this, this place, this, this New Jerusalem, this coming down out of heaven, adorned as a bride for her husband. So she was set free. She was finally with her, her people in peace after spending her entire life on her knees in a cave, praying and fasting. She didn't eat, a, she didn't eat for 30 years. It was a miraculous thing. That woman and what she did for us. And that in, and so when she left, where'd she go? She went to Shambhala. Where's that? It's down in a hole, in a cavern that leads to Shambhala in the Himalayans. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, then maybe you'll believe the prophet, Madame Lavatsky, who said she met Master Moria, Moria. That's the Indian way of saying Mary. And Kuthumi or Kuthumi. Who is that? Kuthumi. Thuma. Thomas. Thumi is Tommy. Thomas. And Thomas went to India. Now, who is Thomas? Well, for those of you who didn't see that video we did the other day, 
you'll have to go back because we can't go into all of that here. But Thomas was the twin. The twin of Jesus. Jesus had a spiritual, we all have twins. We all have our spiritual and then our material part. That Christ in you and the outer man that's wasting away from day into day. And it was the outer man, the body that was on that cross that was crucified, that was raised up. The inner spiritual Christ never dies. And so that's why Thomas was a doubter because he originally was an unbeliever because the flesh cannot see the spirit and they can't understand. But when the flesh comes into contact and touches the spirit, then it believes and then it is raised in immortality. And that's why Thomas went to India to teach the mysteries to the great schools, which most of the great mystery schools were there. And so when these individuals, the Fuhrer and his group, were looking into these truths, they wanted to find a way to defeat the enemy and find peace on earth. And they thought, well, if they get the sword, they could defend themselves with the sword like Peter. And I'll put that away. And they thought, well, hey, we need, uh, we need, uh, power. We need to, to be able to defend ourselves. And so they misunderstood everything. They under, misunderstood the Holy Grail and King Arthur and the legends of the truth, not the legends, the Holy Scriptures. And they under, they misunderstood the prophet Blavatsky because they thought that she taught that, that the Aryan race that, that was somehow, I guess they interpreted it to mean that somewhere in the world there was a, a superior race. But yet the Bible says that he made of one man every nation on the face of the earth. We're all, there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, we're all one in Christ. What she had taught the world is that we started off on the astral plane. And that was the first race. It wasn't a color of your skin thing. It was a, an entirely different thing. It was a dimension. Then we went down from there and, and we became uh, Hyperboreans. Whatever that means, hyper, you know, hyper upper. <laughs> and then we went down to um, the Lemurians. And then we became Atlanteans. And now here we are, the Aryans. Well, that's not a race. It doesn't matter if you're Chinese, African, American, Native American, or German. We're all the same. But they misunderstood the teachings. Very much so. And this led to them in, in, a, in, in a battle for power. They went forth to try and conquer their enemy. So I see we're hour and 13 minutes. And I just can't go any further in this particular video. But there's a lot more that I wanted to cover. Um, there's a lot of history that we should look at. We'll be able to actually put this in such a way that we'll understand. Right? Because while this is going on, Stalin, who's an Ashkenazi, is going over to the Ukraine to try and get rid of all the stragglers that got left over from the Shephardic. And the Germans are going over now, it's now taken over by the German Ordi of the Fool Society that is following the cross that Blavatsky used and misinterpreting all of her teachings and Wagner that's trying to understand the Holy Grail and Himmler who's going over to mountains where there were once uh, great cities and trying to find the Ark of the Covenant and they went everywhere and they even went to the South Pole because they were looking for the entrance to Shambhala. Did they find it? I guarantee they did not find the entrance to heaven. 
but whether or not they found I'll tell you what I believe I, I believe we've been told a lot of lies one of the lies is they're trying to pin this all on Germany but what happened is we I think we did win the war I think that the 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 Ashkenazis won and um, they made up these stories because they're the ones in control down there in communication with these ships coming in at the South Pole. Just one last little point before we leave, just to give you a little indication is if there's any evidence for any of this. During the war, in World War II, the Germans had a little thing they called, uh, they had code names for their operations. So they've been doing this like since 19, after World War One. they started these code names for all these little operations. Operation uh, Seal or op Operation Phoenix or something. You know, they had all these operations, they had names. Well, that all ended in 1944 or somewhere around in there. when Because the war was over, 1945. And there were no more operations. But at that very moment, boom, the United States starts using the same terminology. Then we went to Operation Paperclip, which was to bring over Einstein and his crew to make NASA over here. See, Einstein was just over there just making bombs like for, for the, for the Einführer, right? Knowing exactly, luring that whole little group in to think these little idiots make them think that it was all about a sword you could pull out of a rock. Or, or it was all about racism or something. Just letting them get sucked in until they were over their head. And they may very well be doing the same thing to us today, right here. And I don't think that those individuals had bad hearts, but they were lured into some wrong thinking. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to try to do it here. And we need to make sure we pray for our president. But they're in control of the schizophrenia and the lies. And they don't ever want you to find the truth. They don't, they don't care about no, you know, uh, spiritual swords or, or, or kings of, kingdom of peace or finding the Holy Grail. They're only interested in keeping those truths from you so that you'll never understand who you are and wake up and recognize the Christ in you. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. We'll definitely do this um, again tomorrow. We'll try to uh, pick up right where we left off. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.